Hello everybody, Mark Eskenazi here with ME Corals. We're going to spend a minute today trying to learn a little bit about calcium and alkalinity, along with magnesium, the importance it plays in our aquarium. And there's a lot of in-depth scientific stuff here that can go on and we're not going to get into the deep science, so we're going to try to touch this as a beginner's type or early early way to learn this. So let's start out with why, what is calcium and alkalinity and why do we need it? It's very confusing. A lot of people have a lot of mis misunderstanding and misinformation out there. Uh, basically, if you look at your corals or your rock or your sand bed, they're made up of calcium carbonate. These corals or any coral is calcium carbonate. As they grow new branches, they need to be able to get calcium and alkalinity in order to get the calcium carbonate that they need to grow. In our water, we have dissolved calcium and alkalinity. It needs to be dissolved in the water for our corals to take it. At some point, as corals consume the calcium and alkalinity, we can reach levels that can be harmful, stressful, or even kill our corals. So let's start with, why can't we just add calcium and carbonate to our tank? There are some products on the market that do add calcium carbonate directly to your tank, claiming it's a way of adding calcium and alkalinity. I and many others disagree with that as a way, because much of that is going to turn to rock, sand, or whatever, and basically drop to the bottom of your tank or adhere to other, other places in your aquarium. So what are some ways to administer calcium and alkalinity? Before we even talk about administering, let's get into what are some ways that we may need to maintain our calcium. Calcium in natural seawater is approximately 410. And we need to make sure, first of all, before we add any additives or do anything to our aquariums, and that is to use adequate test kits to make sure that our aquariums, that we know where we are. We don't need to add anything until we find that we are consuming or our corals are consuming and we reach depressed levels. So first, we start by testing. As our calcium gets depleted, we have to find ways to supplement that. It's important that we do that. If not, our corals will die. Calcium gets to 360, we will harm our corals. There is no evidence that shows that maintaining calcium at 500 is going to produce any better results than maintaining at 400. So it actually may be a liability to push your calcium too high. We'll talk about that later. The next thing is alkalinity. Alkalinity needs to be maintained in a tank somewhere in the neighborhood of 7 to 11. There's a lot of discussion on what's appropriate there. Let's start with natural seawater that comes from the ocean is closer to the 7. Personally, I feel a number in the 9 to 10 range is a good place to be, but every tank is different, every system is different. You need to find the place that your tank likes and let it be at equilibrium there. The last thing we need to touch on for a minute here is what is magnesium? As we add calcium and alkalinity to our tank, and let's assume we're doing that through a two-part solution, a liquid solution, um, we can reach a point of oversaturation where that is the calcium and the, and the alkalinity will combine and form calcium carbonate in our tank. And they'll attach to pumps, they'll attach to heaters, impellers, etc. And in essence, we end up having to pour more and more chemicals because we're losing that chemical to, in essence, what's called precipitation. In order to alleviate precipitation, we need to have magnesium levels at a high enough level so that we can reduce precipitation. Now let's talk about magnesium and precipitation because it's, it's very important. If our magnesium is not high enough, again, calcium and alkalinity, as we pour them into a tank, will attach to each other in the water and will either drop down as sand or will attach to your heaters and pumps. We need to make sure it stays liquid in the solution of your aquarium. In order to do that, by adding magnesium, we in essence are taking the calcium atom, ion, and covering it with a layer, let's call it, so that all of a sudden the alkalinity is not attracted to it. And our ability to maintain more chemicals in our water becomes amplified. So a lot of people push to get calcium and alkalinity at their highest levels, at 500 and let's call it 12. Well, it's wrong to do that because in essence what happens is we can only put so much calcium and alkalinity into our aquarium. Um, think of it as a, a bowl or a cup. At some point, if you put too much in, the more you put in, you're just going to be diluting or letting it waste out in, in the form of calcium carbonate precipitation. So the goals here are maintain your magnesium somewhere between 1300 and 1400. It does not get consumed daily by corals. Magnesium can be an addition that's done manually. You can probably raise it 50 points per day 
with one shot. Once you reach your magnesium level, your tank is not going to lose it daily, but your tank will lose calcium and alkalinity. And now, how do we maintain calcium and alkalinity? Well, my preferred method is obviously two-part. You can buy ME Core products, but by using two-part, we can find out what our consumption is on a daily basis. Example, in a 100-gallon aquarium, moderately stocked SPS, 25 mils per day of calcium and alkalinity dosed by means of dosing pumps could be the preferred method to do this throughout the day. Those that don't have dosing pumps can manually add the additions, but as we add alkalinity to our tanks with a manual addition, we run the risk of raising pH and stunning our corals a little bit, so the addition needs to be done in a slow, moderate level. Speaking of alkalinity, to me, alkalinity is my Achilles heel. Why I say this is a drop in alkalinity is something that can cause corals to brown, burn, or even die. And in a system that is heavily stocked with SPS, that can happen in a day or two. Where calcium, it's less amplified. And what I mean by that is a 2.8 drop in alkalinity would only drop your calcium approximately 20. In other words, if your alkalinity was 9 and you were at 450 calcium, well, you could drop all the way down to 6.8 alkalinity and your calcium would only drop to 430, 425, which is insignificant and still within the adequate zone. But a drop of alkalinity from 9 to 6.8 could significantly cause harm to corals. So to me, alkalinity needs to be tested the most often of all chemicals. I test twice a week and I recommend strongly that that becomes the most important to you. The other thing I want to mention is that it's important to have a balanced calcium and alkalinity scheme. With two-part, most manufacturers that manufacture calcium and alkalinity manufacture them so that you can dose them or add them in equal quantities. That is 20 mils, 50 mils, 80 mils of each on the same day. We don't want to be dosing 100 mils of one and 20 mils of the other. So we make concentrations of calcium and alkalinity to equate the consumption rate, which I just mentioned is 2.8 to basically 20 on calcium. So remembering that, we need balanced systems and most importantly, alkalinity is the one that can cause us the most harm as major fluctuations in alkalinity will brown out corals. And I've just explained to you that calcium can only really move very little relative to the amount of alkalinity. That's due to the fact that our aquariums have more calcium in the aquarium. Okay. Lastly, I want to spend a little second talking about a couple of other ways to uh, add calcium and alkalinity to your tank. Kalkwasser is a good way of adding calcium and alkalinity to your tank. Like anything else, it has its positive and negatives. But in a tank that is lightly stocked or has low consumption of calcium and alkalinity, Calc added via your top off water in a slow method because it does raise pH and could cause harm, could actually maintain a tank sufficiently for calcium and alkalinity. At some point though, as you add more and more corals to your system, that will not maintain your system and you will have to add over and above that, that calc washer. You'll have to add either two part or another method that some people employ would be a calcium reactor and not to get in too deep. But we mentioned before that our aquariums are made up of the skeleton of corals and they're calcium carbonate. Well, if calcium carbonate is put in a chamber and the pH of that chamber is allowed to drop to, let's say, 6.5, then that calcium carbonate or these corals can break down to the point where they do dissolve and produce calcium and alkalinity for our tank. That is the, the basis of how a calcium reactor works and it's why you can add calcium carbonate, but only if your pH goes to 6.5, not straight into your tank, as that would turn just into rock. And it would crush your corals if the pH was so low that calcium or corals melted. So again, with that, the ways to maintain calcium and alkalinity, you've got two part, you could do it by hand, you could do a calcwasser, you could do a calcium reactor. At the end of the day, every tank's different. We can get the job done with any method that you want. The importance of testing is the most important. Please don't add chemicals to your tank if you don't know where you're at or where you're going. Have a target, learn what the consumption rate is for calcium and alkalinity of your system, and match that consumption. With occasional testing from week to week, you'll be able to tweak a dosing pump in where you will match consumption with a quality two part. And a quality two part becomes most important and here we are with ME Coral stating, 
you must have a quality two part that is pharmaceutical grade so that we're not putting impurities into our system. We'll move on in some of the future videos to talk about some other interesting things. I hope you had a wonderful day. Thank you.